good morning and good afternoon and good evening, everyone, those who watch us from all over the world. And my name is Alex Borovensky. I'm the director for English Theatre of Ukraine, running Getting to Know series. And in front of me, we have the only person who can make me wake up at 8.30 to do the Zoom meeting. Uh, That's Deborah a good away one. from Australia. Hi, Deborah. Hi, hi. Well, I'm glad I got you up early. That's a, you know, that's an achievement already. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, the reason we're talking is because Deborah brought her performance on How Said into the online section of Prague Fest, and she is from Australia, and we are here in Ukraine, and the performance is online, and uh, which means not only Ukrainians but everybody else can see it. And uh, as far as I know, the performance uh, was streamed yesterday, was the premiere date at the festival, Tuesday, and uh, mm -hmm. technically it already happened. How do you feel? Because this premiere is online. It's not like, you know, you sit in there and you see the audience. How do you feel after online premiere? It's always a bit strange. It's true. Yeah, because, um, you know, you have no idea what's going on with the audience. Uh, but, you know, during COVID, we were lucky to have a very good recording because this show was made in 2019, took the whole year to make, and we presented it in Melbourne, in Australia, in the end of 2019, and it was very exciting. Luckily, we filmed it. We had a very good filming and editor and things, so you get a sense of the show, because, of course, COVID happened. We had a couple of invitations for the show, which, you know, we couldn't do. But, you know, having a, what I feel is at least we can get the show out to the world. And actually in the last couple of years, it's gone to Cairo, it's gone to another venue here in Australia. Um, and it's had one of the one, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so it's not the same because, you know, nothing better than sitting, you know, as a director, sitting in the audience, you know, yeah, it's it can't beat it. And I just miss that. However, I mean, other times what we've done is, um, I'm just gonna quit that, we've had Q and A's, we've had questions and answers with the cast and with myself um, live on street, you know, after the, after the screening, which actually has been okay. And that's actually been quite fulfilling because at least you have some sense of engagement with the audience. But, you know, it's not my preferred, but at least it can get out there in this crazy world, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. And I don't know, how you would bring that cast? How many people do you have in the show? I've seen a lot in the trailer. How many? Yes. Of them? Yes. Seven. Seven in the cast. Seven. Yeah, well, which is a great number. Uh, but uh, which brings me to this. How did you feel and how was the original premiere? The premiere that you did in Australia? Uh, how many people were there? What was the reception? And what, what, what did you think? Did you achieve what you wanted <laughs> to achieve with the show? Yes. Okay. Good question. Yes. I mean, so simple answer. This whole process, because we made this work, I made this work with an ensemble of older ex-homeless women. So one or two of them actually had been, had performed before, but mostly not. So I took a year and myself and actually the vocal person um, to work with them vocally, physically. I worked with them to give them a sense of, because I'm very specific in my style of performance. I trained, I don't know if you know Tadashi Suzuki. I trained with Suzuki, I teach, and I am very rigorous. So I um, needed to get them together as an ensemble because I'm you know, strict on the things of stillness, silence, focus, You know, things that bring the ensemble together. So we worked for the whole year, um, not full time of course, but getting the sense of the ensemble first, and then of course, extracting the work. And I don't do theater that's plays. I do things that give um, that are more visceral and visual. And I want to give my audience an experience of, of the world that we create in this time, in this particular case, the world of uh, that these women experience as, you know, as homeless women. Um, so it was very exciting to do, and I was extraordinarily happy with this work. I love this work. I love these women. We bonded. We created this world, and we presented in a, a theatre called Theatre Works here, who also supported it. It's um, did the city of Port Phillip. I have to say that. Um, we no, no. I want to say that because I'm so thankful for them supporting both Theatre Works and um, the city of Port Phillip. They've been incredibly supportive of the work and of my work and in general. And they have theatre works is just very close to where I live. And also where a lot of the women, um, actually one of the women was homeless and she slept on a bench outside the theatre when she was homeless. So it was quite interesting. 
so it was very local. Um, but we presented it there and we had extraordinary response. So we have packed audiences every night. We had incredibly strong reviews, rave reviews, actually, which was really, really wonderful. And it was, you know, it, it was a test for the women because it was two weeks of season. You know, that that's for them it was quite a lot um, because they're older. I mean, they're all housed now, but um, they stayed with it and they grew during that time. And seriously, the response was so heartening and so wonderful. And as not so also want to say you know yes it's about that but I also am of the belief because I you know it's not the idea of community theatre so it doesn't matter I am number one the theatre work has to be of a quality the theatre work has to be strong theatre and right. this is what we're making it about but number one we need to and they all came with me in the world we had a wonderful relationship between all of us and in fact we're making thanks again to see Port Phillip we're making a new work now which is a little different but um yeah with that ensemble we had a very a lot of trust a lot of fun yeah so yeah oh my i have so many questions now <laughs> all right let me get with the first yeah uh so because you're saying you doing the new project with this, the same women the same people yes who did it Except before for one dropped out yeah yeah and uh so they were uh, not professional actresses before and you used the suzuki technique with them how did their how did their lives change you said many of them were uh homeless women uh did yeah. their life change after the performance and do you follow well you're friends with them now do you follow their lives and how did the performance change the performers yeah good question again um so when but when i met them they were already housed like they some of them still were having problems but what was the most significant thing i think that changed for them as a result of doing the work was a sense of community and um, really feeling because they felt the power of it all and they felt the response to it and they heard their voices their voices were heard by so many we had a lot of um, press on this we we're on the news a lot of um, papers and things so they um, are really appreciated for the strength of the possibilities of performance theatre and getting their voices heard and I think that really changed them and also they became really close together close community together, which was very beautiful yeah really really wonderful you know there's a sense of real friendship and camaraderie and and you know that's special i think well yeah. I, I i can understand it totally in pre english theater that i run we have the special uh, meaning special word which we call pre english family and it doesn't necessarily mean the actors only uh, the company it means the staff also some of the uh, audience members uh, mostly people who come often and who like us and who like the values that we share and basically it is like a family because some people get bonded in a way that I wanted more than you know some of them started dating and we're like whoa yeah. okay <laughs> yeah. well that's very common I know I mean you know <laughs> it's a common thing isn't it <laughs> absolutely but it's like that there's one beautiful thing about I love about theater many years ago for four years or five years I belonged to a company in Sydney I'm in Melbourne now and we toured, we made work, and um, we had a bit of a community of performance makers. Each of us were kind of in, also in other companies, but they're like my family still. They really are like my family many years later. Love these people. We, there's nothing like it. You can't, you, I don't know how to explain, like you know, because you're in theatre and you have that there, but it's very special. Very yeah, special. it's like, uh, to me, every performance is like a little adventure. Uh, and when you prepare the performance, you go on this adventure together with the team, and they are your team, they are your gang. Uh, uh, you, sometimes you are a captain of the ship, sometimes you're the sailor on this ship, but you're in it together. Absolutely. So, so, yeah. And you my, have to be it. Yeah. Uh, my next okay. question is, because this is something that Ukraine doesn't have, Ukrainian theatrical system doesn't have. Uh, you have Tashmadeda company, and, uh, well, first of all, I would like to hear a little bit more about Tashmadeda. Uh, and second of all is uh, we have referred to a theater system, which means pretty often there is the theater with the venue in place. You guys have companies and sometimes you also have theaters. How is it different company <laughs> versus theater? Okay, yeah. yeah. We, um, to tell you the truth, we don't have that many companies that work in dance, yes, of course, but theater companies years ago when I used to belong to that company, we had many we had companies that were fully basically funded as well so that was our full-time job which was beautiful that doesn't happen so much anymore unfortunately um 
more for the for the uh, state theatre companies, of course, that happen. But even the state theatre companies don't have a regular group of actors. They draw on a pool of actors and and you know and cohort and you know musicians, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, lighting. But they don't have a full time company. Um, here, the theatres. You, you know, there are different style of theatres here. So um, we have a lot of independent artists and smaller, like my company, Tashman Data, I, I started uh, a number of years ago now. And the idea of what one was to make work, one to create international collaborations, you know, here in Australia and, and going there and bringing people here to, for many different reasons, basically to be, um, you know, a structure for things to happen artistically in the theatre world. and. Um, but yeah, so it's not, it's a little different than it used to be because we don't have those full time companies anymore. I feel very, very lucky that I was part of the full time company world those, you know, those years when I was young. It's how I grew up in a way. I grew up performance wise or, you know, theatre wise in that company, you know, with that company structure around me. And it gave me that great ethos of, you know, I'm a rigor, you know, working every day, making the work. It's, yeah, and that sense we we're talking about the company and the community of performance makers and you know you work together and you're in that together and they become like your family so yeah we we not so different from you anymore unfortunately and i think around the world it's probably pretty the same you know yeah absolutely yeah. well and uh this thing again back again to the online performances it's really unites now i would never see i guess i would never see the australian performance we have icelandic we have us guys in the online section and how else would you go I mean, only the ticket costs like, yeah, hell of a money. Uh, yeah. That's right. The other I do tour. Yeah. Well, when, when I tour, I mean, I'm, I'm also a perform, um, performance maker, performer myself. So things I have toured with are usually, apart from when I was with the company, then, you know, it was all, but luckily I've been able to tour with my work, which is a, just mainly often very, a few solo shows easy to tour, easy to be invited because they're solo shows. So I had like one solo show I made, it was called Kodili Mankind. It was, um, you know, it toured everywhere, like Poland and Europe, because it's much easier with the small, you know, myself and the, um, you know, the, the small tech people I need to, to tour, because it is a problem with Australia. We're far away from everything and it's expensive. Otherwise, you know, another piece I've toured with, um, again, you know, festivals have to invite you, which is generally the way I go. The other way I tour is by running workshops as well. I've done that a lot. But because um, I do love to tour, I love to, if I'm going somewhere, I love it to be within a theatre context because to me that's, you know, the, the ideal way to, to go. So I've been very lucky. But, you know, theatres and festivals, festivals are the main thing in terms of touring for, for my work and from here in Australia. Yeah, yeah or, absolutely. And recently my saying was that if you do travel to a foreign country, there should be a festival we perform at. Otherwise, there is no reason for us to go. No, we wouldn't exactly. go. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, brings me. To, do you uh, are you aware about this uh, company uh, called Eventatron? Uh, they basically they connect pretty much all theatrical festivals together, and this is how oh. we uh, made the first festival call via Eventatron, and we got tremendous response. This is how we got I don't know fifty percent of the performers. You, you have you heard about the company? Well, I have now, but not. Before you, actually, yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, they're it's fantastic. Great. They put together all of this. Basically, it's like an aggregator for all the festivals, and you can apply. And I really, really like uh, the whole system. And now, because uh, probably, Deborah, you know, there is always some kind of conspiracy about festivals. You never know what is the deadline, uh, how many festivals out there. You have to know yeah. people. It's And to yeah. me, it's like the Sicilian Mafia. You have to know somebody to tell you something to be accepted. Yeah, yeah. Was it the it's case true. with your uh, festival uh, touring thing? Like, was it easy to find the festivals? And how, how did you get there? Okay, yeah. Uh, so it's a little bit of a mix of things. So we here in big performing arts. And you can, you know, a lot of people that not, you know, have to wait for the next one after people can come back to Australia grim properly. But um, it is specific. We've been having them for years that there can be a meeting between the artists and festivals and, you know, venues. And I've actually toured, I mean, to Asia and, and to a couple of Croatia through meeting people and them and showing my work through um, the performing arts market. So that's been one thing. But of course, once you start to go away, once you tour and people see your work, you know, then it's a bit of a, um, 
you know, domino things like that one sees it. Oh, I love your work. Let's bring it here. You know, so it happens in that way as well. So you just need that foot in first and you get to go somewhere and then, you know, it, oh, it's a bit of a, um, you know, that will start the ball rolling. So for instance, one of my works, um, actually I had a work called Dead Twin, which I directed and performed in, which was crazy, but um, it was <laughs> taken by a festival in Penang in Malaysia. And, you know, he, the director of that came to the performing arts, like an amazing man called the Georgetown Festival director called um, Joe Sadik. And, you know, we had that work there, it was site specific, so it was in, you know, whatever. And then um, a year or two years later, he invited a, diff a different show of mine because that one worked well. And he, sh he did another show of mine called Kaboom, which was about a very installation performance. And again, we found a great space for it. So there was a relationship set up. The relationships are really important in terms of touring. Um, but you just need that first. And we're very lucky. Well, we have. Ho hopefully it will start again, the idea of these performing arts. And I get but I do, you know, before pandemic, I tour a lot and I get out to, I get out a lot. And, um, you know, for instance, I ran a workshop in Sri Lanka, you know, Suzuki workshop around that. And then uh, it was in 2019 again, but I was meant to go back the next year. We were going to make a show with this ensemble and take it to India. You know what I mean? So it happens like that. But unfortunately, we have to wait. <laughs> well, yeah. I was going to go back this year. But because the Australian High Commission said, oh, yeah, we've got the money for it. and But, of course, they've got a big, uh, terrible political event here, like you, unfortunately, you know. Have yeah, and uh, we, we'd love to see you in Ukraine because, well, say, for English structure, it's not only the theatre, but it's also the great big drama school, the only one that does things in English. And we do okay. think that when Ukraine wins this war, there will be quite yeah. a lot of money built into the restoration of the infrastructure and culture which will allow well, us to invite international coaches and directors. And that's what we're hoping to do, to meet in person, not only. Oh, that'd be so fantastic. I mean, I wish I, you know, I could have come, but it's impossible, of course. I would love, love, love to come and, you know, and meet you in person and make, you know, make some work or do a workshop for you. I really would. I really, really would. And yeah, let's hope that happens really soon. Yeah. I mean, well, I'll it will. Well, it's, it's Ukraine and it's Australia. What can be? possibly go wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, I wanted to go back a bit about uh, to Tadashi Suzuki because, uh, well, first thing that I watched uh, the trailer is the spontaneity, not spontaneity, something when people go together, the synchro synchronicity of movements and this spe very special way of breathing. And now when you mention Tadashi Suzuki, I'm like, that's what it was. And I yeah. took a couple workshops with huh. the followers and the trainers that teach Suzuki method, but I never met a person which I believe is you, who studied under Suzuki. So could you yes, tell me how it was? Because I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Life changing, let me tell you that. Um, OK, so when I was with this company in Sydney, I think I told you about them like earlier, um, we were invited with one of our shows to perform at the festival in to Toga, Togamora at Suzuki's, do you know about the festival there, the Suzuki's festival every year in he, he runs a festival, um, which is quite amazing that you have all these incredible people going. So we were, we were invited to perform at his, the Suzuki festival, the Toga festival, it's called TOGA, which is where it is, which was quite extraordinary. So as a company, we went to start to, um, to, tra to perform the, the show there. Um, I had done a little bit of Suzuki before because one, someone I know had been there and he was teaching it here. So what happened was after the festival, which was amazing and the performing there was incredible, life-changing, um, I stayed on and uh, he had a training, like a one, one month training every day, um, six days a week with Suzuki at, at, uh, at his kind of, has a huge um, theatre and, and, two different kind of uh, stages and people stay there and that's where the residency is as well as the festival so I stayed there and trained with him which was and the company itself so it was it was rigorous it was painful wonderful life change but you know it's that that training for me has been changed everything for me I mean I've trained with you know done the decrew I've trained with a lot of different methods but um the, the rigor and the focus and the, 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 in the sensibility, the internal sensibility that that training does really suited me. And I loved it. And I had a lovely relationship with Suzuki. The following year I went back. So when Suzuki thought he'd got, he was going to teach one more time and he 
you know, send people off because he just got tired of teaching. I went back to Toga and did that last bit with him, which was quite extraordinary because apart from the training, you know, and it was so lovely to re-meet all the company again. Um, he would he would get us up and he'd be talking because he didn't want to teach anyone. So he would get up and go, oh, come, come, come to the, you know, to the dining room. And he'd just be talking philosophy, unbelievable philosophy. So that was another, you know, and since then, one of his company members, he came to Australia once to do something, but basically I trained again with one of the company members. And then I've been teaching it because I was allowed to teach it at that time. So I have been teaching it ever since. You know, I used to teach it a lot and I teach it here and there now. Um, but those sensibilities have embedded themselves in my own pedagogy when I teach and when I perform and when I direct. I, I love that. So I've made it mine. When I teach straight Suzuki, I teach straight Suzuki. Like I come and, you know, Ukraine and teach, you know, a, a workshop of Suzuki. And as well as I could also, you know, I, I make it when I'm directing or when I'm performing, I, you know, just use it as a base for a certain sensibility. And so I don't do this, you know, Suzuki has his training and his style of theatre. His style of theatre is his theatre. I don't, you know, you don't plagiarise that. The yeah. training is for yeah, the body and for the, act, the individual actor that has really embedded itself in my sensibility for sure. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was okay. very special. Yeah. And I love no, teaching. No, you're allowed now to be. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, how did, how did the ladies from Unhouse said took it? Because uh, I know from a drama school that even simple concentration exercises in acting, they take people without preparation. They go, oh my God, we cannot do it. But Suzuki to yeah. them, and you did use it. Uh, in preparation of how set. How did they take it? Did, how did they survive? <laughs> well, I didn't do this, you know, stomping. You have this very rigorous stomping. Yeah, I know. Because of the, I, did, I didn't do that. That was, but the, um, yes, the rigor of the focus, concentration, they were, you know what? They loved it because they loved that it was such a, a um, very particular structure and they could work within that. You know, I think it gave them boundaries to make the work. And then, then they trust, it was a lot of trust between us. And they trusted, because when there's strong boundaries, you, you feel freer in a way. And I think that's part of the work as well, what, that, what the philosophy is. And they really like that. And, you know, we, I was very, very particular with the stillness and, you know, explaining to them that if, you know, you're all meant to be looking there and the focus is meant to be over there. Well, if you're doing, if you move, scratch, fidget, well, you've taken the focus away, you know, and, they got that, they understood that really, really well. And they understood, we talked a lot about the nature of the ensemble and how in an ensemble, you know, you really got to work together and you've got, you, you, you can't just think of yourself. So they took it really well. They really loved it actually. They felt safe within it actually. Wow, yeah, yeah. And uh, another point that I also noticed, like if you do acting, uh, it takes you away. Professional actors, they always away. <laughs> but if yeah, you yeah, take yeah. the person into artistic world, it gives you tremendous shelter. Uh, this yes. artistic, the yeah. story of the performance, the safe space of your colleagues, uh, this whole thing, it takes you, that's what we use a lot in Ukraine right now, because this is not the safe space, but while we do yeah. performances, we feel tremendously protected, and that's yeah. probably what the art can give, I don't know, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful so, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah, uh, so I guess we're going to be finishing on that, because, well, Deborah, thank you very much for the talk. It's been very interesting and very, very <laughs> inspiring. Uh, people watching us, uh, the performance uh, on How Sad uh, by Tashma Data Company and Deborah Wayne already been premiered at Prague Fest, but you can still see it online because uh, thanks to our online partner, Scene Saver, it is available throughout the whole festival, which is until 31st of August. You can watch it on the page of Scene Saver. And we're gonna put a link to this performance underneath our conversation and watch the conversation. It has a lot of interesting insights and watch the performance because it is great looking, wonderful story and wonderful actresses uh, mm -hmm. down there. Deborah, thank you very much for the talk. Thanks, Alex. Gotcha. Thanks, really lovely to speak to you. Like really wonderful. Absolutely, <laughs> we'll one day we'll speak in person. I, I, I'm Sorry. sure of that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Bye. -bye.